I was told that in Israeli journalist Alex Gilade was categorically denied a visa. So I called for an office because it was agreed that all journalists have free access. And they told me that it was not them, it not their business, but the KGB who denied the visa. So I called KGB general <laughs> Ivan Pavlovich Abramov who was responsible for journalist visits. By the way, he was quite certain. <laughs> the, general, the general told me that there was no question of giving a visit to Alex Gilade because he was from Mossad, the Israeli secret service. <laughs> I replied that if Gilade was indeed from Mossad, it's th their colleague, and he should be wine and dine. <laughs> But if he was not, then it was our business. And I told, if Gilade was denied a visa, I said I would have to resign. And I told the general my story about Mexican visa. Uh, finally, the general had found that Alex is not agent of Mossad. And Alex Gilade got his visa and was my guest. <laughs> Today, he is member of International Olympic Committee. 62 teams, 62 nations boycotted the Mo Moscow Games, and from Western countries, only Britain, France, Italy, Sweden participated. And when some American athletes challenged the decision of American uh, Olympic Committee, Jimmy Carter threatened the, to cancel the passports of any of them who went to the games. I will tell you my personal opinion. <coughs> Soviet intervention, in intervention to Afghanistan was foolish thing, and later it was understood. But boycott of the Olympics also was not to never thing. Those who had never lived behind the Iron Curtain sometimes do not understand that any Olympic Games is some hole in the Iron Curtain that will exist. Because it's not only sportsmen who are coming to country, it's many tourists are coming to the country. In any precautions um, state can make, it's always contacts with foreigners of the country living, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the Olympic city. And it's most important because, you know, for people, it's also important sometimes to see on television this, this coverage. The boycott of Olympic Games in Moscow had very negative impact on the Olympic Games in Los Angeles. Uh, the Soviets decided to boycott the LA Games. I participated in the meeting of the Soviet Olympic Committee when that was decided. It, Vitaly Smirnov, member of IOC, still a member of IOC, and I we had voted against but in, uh, in Soviet press was, of course, written that it was accepted, United, the decision was unanimous. The Central Committee of Communist Party explained that it was not revenge for the boycott of the Olympic Games, uh, but that emigrant groups in Los Angeles threatened terrorist at attacks against Soviet sportsmen. There were indeed letters with such threats, but I am not sure that they were not arranged for uh, from Moscow. And as a member of IOC Television Commission, I had visited Los Angeles, Angeles and had met with the local security services. They were very well prepared to protect the Soviet team. This, it was guaranteed. Of course, there were fools on both sides. Uh, one Los Angeles newspaper published an article saying that most Soviet sportsmen were KGB agents. And, of course, some real KGB officers used that assertion as an added argument to justify the boycott of the Olympic Games. I suggested a very simple thing, that it would be very easy to solve the problem. The young gymnast, upon landing at LA airport, could leave the airplane with a slogan on their Olympic uniform, I am KGB agent. <laughs> But my, 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 
human was, was not appreciated. Uh, the host country media must have enough courage to explain to their politicians that the only way to counteract any negative publicity resulting from press freedom is to give media more freedom. An atmosphere of real freedom is in and of itself good publicity, and I regret that I don't have colleagues from the Virgin Television here. Thank you.